Today we are doing lesson 2.2, adding rational numbers and focusing on adding with fractions. Our I can statements for today, I can add rational numbers and I can solve real life problems. So our key idea here is the same as what it was for the decimals lesson. Um, we're using the same rules for signs that we use for integers. So that would be same sign, find the sum, different signs, find the difference. With fractions, it's important that we make things into a common denominator before we add. So on this one, we have negative one-third and positive one-sixth. They change from one-third to two-sixths by multiplying by two times two times two. Then they did negative two-sixths plus one-sixth, combining that numerator, negative two plus one, different signs, find the difference. That's negative one, so negative one six. And you can see the negative written in the numerator. That's generally how I write it. Generally, the book writes it with the uh, negative sign out in front of the fraction. E either way is fine. All right, so let's take a look at this one. I have five negative eight thirds plus a positive five six. So for any fraction, problem where you're adding or subtracting with fractions, your first step is going to be finding a common denominator. So that means we need to change our fractions into the same size piece before we can add or subtract with them. So I'm going to look at my denominators. I have thirds and six, and I know I could do three times two to get it to be six. So I'm going to keep the five, six as six. And I'm going to do 3 times 2 and 8 times 2 to get my new fraction. Notice there's a negative sign here. So 8 times 2 is 16. I'm going to take that negative sign and write it in the numerator just to make it a little easier to see. So that's negative 16. And then 3 times 2 is 6. So I have negative 16, 6 plus positive 5, 6. So my fractions are now the same size which means I can now add them together. So six are the size of my pieces. That's gonna stay the same. Once you find that common denominator, it stays the same all the way through the problem. All right, negative 16 plus positive five. So now we're ignoring this part down at the bottom. We're just focusing on the top. Different signs find the difference. So I'm thinking 16 minus five, which is 11. And then I know I have more negatives. So my answer is gonna be negative, negative 11. Anytime you have a final answer that is an improper fraction like this one, which means the numerator, the top part, is bigger than the denominator, the bottom part, um, that means the value is more than one and we're gonna change it into a mixed number. Sometimes in problems it's helpful if you have multiple steps to leave it as an improper fraction until you get to the end, but we are at the end of this problem. Now, depending on the number, sometimes you can change it into a mixed number in your head, but if you can't, then you can use the steps that we did for changing our fractions into the decimals. We can set up our division the same way. 11 divided by six. 11 goes on the inside, six goes on the outside. Six goes into 11 one time. That's my whole number. One times six is six. 11 minus six is five. Now, if I was going to do a decimal, I'd add a zero and bring it down. But here I would just want to make it a mixed number because it's a fraction problem. So my remainder is five. I have five pieces left over, and those pieces are sixths. So I'm going to go back over here. I have negative because my answer was negative one for my whole number. My remainder was five, so five. And then my fraction size when I'm dividing by a sixth. So this right here is my final answer, negative one and five six. Okay, let's take a look at one that has two mixed numbers. Now for mixed numbers, you have a couple different options. You can keep them as mixed numbers and line them up vertically and add them or subtract them depending on what the numbers are. Or you can, um, change them into improper fractions and then add them that way. So um, I'll do these different, I'll show both strategies for different um, problems. Generally, if, if it's addition here, same sign, find the sum. I like to keep my mixed numbers as mixed numbers. I think it's a little bit easier. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that negative eight, but I do need the one half and the two thirds to have a common denominator before I set up my um, problem or before I continue with my problem. Okay, so if you're not sure about a common denominator, you can always multiply your denominators together. So two times three is six. And for this problem, six happens to be our least common denominator, the smallest number that is divided both by three and two evenly. Okay, and then I have to think about what did I multiply by? Well, I did two times three to make it six. So I have to do one times three, that's gonna be three six. So I have eight and three six. And then over here, I did three times two to make it six. So I have to do two times two, that's gonna be four. Okay, so same signs, find the sum, my final answer is going to be negative. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna line up my place values, just like when we were adding with decimals or when we have multiple digit numbers, it's helpful to line up the place values so you can see what you're adding. Same goes for our mixed numbers as well. Okay, and these were both negatives, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the negatives in front, okay. So same time for the sum, I'm forgetting about these negatives for a moment, I'm just gonna add them like positive numbers. All right, three, six plus four, six. Three plus four is seven, so I have seven, six. And then I have negative eight plus negative four, well that would be negative 12. But I have a problem here, my seven, six is greater than one, that part's actually an improper fraction. 6 goes into 7 one time with 1 as a remainder. If you need to, you can do the division off to the side. I'll show it for those of you that need to see it. Numerator, denominator, 6 goes into 7 one time with 1 as a remainder. 1 and 1, 6, that's where this came from. All right, so now I need to put this part together. I had a negative 12 and seven six, but really it's like one and one six. So when I put that 12 and that one, and since all of this was negative, that part's negative as well. So now it's like doing negative 12 plus negative one and one six. That's gonna give me a final answer of negative 13 and one six. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more problems. Okay, so for number two and number three, you have one that's an improper fraction and one that's a mixed number, so, or a whole number. So you'll have to make them into the same form before you add. Go ahead and pause the video and try these three on your own. Okay, let's check our answer. So for number one, I have negative seven eighths and one fourth. I know four can be multiplied by two to make it into eight. So I'm gonna keep this one as an eight. While I rewrite it, I'm gonna take that negative sign and write it up with the numerator, write it with the seven. So it stands out more, it doesn't get lost with the fraction bar. Okay, so over here on the one fourth, I'm gonna multiply by two and two, one times two is two, four times two is eight. So I have negative seven eighths plus positive two eighths. The eighths on the bottom, that stays the same. Negative seven plus positive two, different signs, find the difference. Seven minus two is five, more negatives, answers negative, negative five eighths. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So here I have negative six and one third and 20 thirds. So I mentioned that you needed to make them the same form, either both mixed numbers or both improper fractions. Since I did our last problem with them as mixed numbers, this time I'll do them as improper fractions. So six times three is 18 plus one is 19. So as an improper fraction, that one's gonna be negative 19 thirds. And then this one is 20 thirds. Okay, so um, 
same denominator, that's going to stay the same, thirds. That's the size of the piece I'm dealing with. Different signs, find the difference. 20 minus 19 is 1. More positives, answer is positive. So positive 1 third is my answer here. All right, so for number 3, you have 2 and I have negative 7 halves. So if I want to make them both improper fractions, I need to make that 2 into a fraction that looks like that, 2 over 1. So if you have a whole number and you want to put it as an improper fraction, you have to make it over 1. Okay, and then before I can add them, I do need a common denominator, which means I'm going to need to multiply that by 2. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. So I have 4 halves plus negative 7 halves. My denominators halves. That just tells us the size of the fraction piece. That's going to stay the same. 4 plus negative 7, different signs. Find the difference. 7 minus 4 is 3. More negatives. Answer is negative. I have an improper fraction here. My numerator, the top, is bigger than the bottom. So I need to make that into a mixed number. Negative 3 halves is the same thing as negative 1 and 1 half. 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 as a remainder. All right, so our next type of problem is evaluating an expression when you have so, uh, exponents. So, or I'm sorry, not exponents, you have variables here. So um, I have x plus y when x is 1 fourth and y equals negative 3 halves. Don't overlook that negative there. So we're going to start by just putting in those numbers into the problem. So x was 1 fourth, so I'm going to write 1 fourth plus my y is negative 3 halves. Again, I like to write my negatives in the numerator so I can see them a little better. Okay, I need a common denominator. I know I can do times 2, 2 times 2 to get to 4. So I'm going to multiply both of these by 2. Okay, so for 1 fourth, I'm going to keep it 1 fourth. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 2 times 2 is 4. All right, different signs, find the difference. 6 minus 1 is 5. It's going to be a negative 5 because I have more negatives. Negative 5 fourths. I do have an improper fraction here. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, so I'm going to make it into a mixed number. I'll go ahead and do the division off to the side for those of you that need to see it. Top number goes on the inside. 5 divided by 4. 4 goes into 5 one time with 1 as a remainder. That makes it 1 and 1 fourth. And because it's negative, it's actually negative 1 and 1 fourth. All right, go ahead and try these two problems. Before you try number five, these are absolute value bars. So you'll need to add the two fractions and then you'll have to find the absolute value of that amount. Go ahead and pause the video and try it. Okay, let's check our answer. So for number four, I have B plus A. B is negative five halves. A is positive one half. Lucky us, we already have a common denominator, so we don't need to do anything about that. Different signs, find the difference. 5 minus 1 is 4. More negatives, the answer is negative. Common denominator of 2. All right, so I have negative 4 halves. Okay, I need to make that into a mixed number or whole number. This one happens to be a whole number. It's going to be negative 2. Where did that negative 2 come from? Well, I'll show you. Those of you that need to see it. Numerator on the inside. 4 divided by 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. 
I have a remainder of 0, so I don't have a fraction along with it. I just have the 2. This was negative, so that's negative. All right, next one, absolute value of a, 1 half, plus b, negative 5 halves. Now you might have noticed that these are the same numbers. So um, I already know that when I add these two fractions from over here, that I get a sum of negative 2. So I'm just going to go to this part. Absolute value of negative 2, that means the distance from negative 2 to 0 on the number line. That also means make your answer positive. So my answer on that one is 2. All right, and this one's our last problem, story problem. It says this table shows the water level in inches of a reservoir for three months compared to the yearly average. Is the water level for the three month period greater than or less than the yearly average and explain? Okay, so I need to um, add these together and then I'm gonna see if it's greater than zero or less than zero and that's gonna tell me if it's greater than or less than our um, yearly average. So really the problem we're doing is this, we're adding these numbers together. Okay, so I need to do a couple things. One, I need to decide if I'm gonna keep them as mixed numbers or do improper fractions. I think since I have one that is not a mixed number and it's just a regular fraction, I'm gonna change these into impropers. So eight times two is 16 plus one is 17, so that would be negative 17 eighths plus. And then four times one is four, plus one is five. So this one's gonna be five fourths plus negative nine. I'm writing my negative in the numerator, so it stands out a little bit more, sixteenths. All right, so eighths, fourths, sixteenths. Sixteenth is my biggest one, and I know that I can do this times four to make it sixteen, and this, the eighths times two to make it sixteen. So I'm gonna use sixteen as my common denominator. Okay, so negative seventeen times two and eight times two. Negative seventeen times two is negative thirty-four. Eight times two is sixteen. Here I'm going to take 5 and 4 and multiply by 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So I have 20 sixteenths. And negative 9 sixteenths. So I have three numbers. I can use my commutative property to reorder them. I could use associative property to group them. Um, or I can just go left to right, which is what I'm going to do on this one. Okay, negative 34 sixteenths plus 20 sixteenths. Now we have numbers here. The numerators are double digits. I have different signs. I'm going to find the difference. If you can't do that in your head, you can do it off to the side. 34 minus 20. 4 minus 0 is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. That's 14 more negatives, answers negative, so really it's like negative 14 sixteenths. And then I've got to add in my other number here, negative 9 over 16. Same signs now, find the sum. Again, if you need to, feel free to rewrite it and line things up. 4 plus 9 is going to be 13. Okay, one plus one is two. So 14 plus nine is going to be 23. I have two negative numbers. So that means my answer is gonna be negative. So negative four over 14 over 16 plus negative nine over 16 gives us never tw negative 23 over 16. 23 is bigger than 16, so I need to make that into a mixed number. Again, feel free to write the work off to the side if you need to see it. 
16 goes into 23 once. 1 times 16 is 16. We've got a borrow in our subtraction. This is going to be a 1. This is going to become a 13. 13 minus 6 is 7. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have 1 and 7 sixteenths. I really should be negative because this is negative. So negative 1 and 7 sixteenths story problems need a label. Looks like my label up here is inches. So that's the mathematical answer. Then I need to explain. It is less than the average because the answer is negative. All right, there you have it.